And after struggling to deal with last weekend's flooding, some low-income families in the Sparks area are also getting some much-needed help in repairing their homes. We've seen everything from just minor, minor roof patching. Oh, oh my yes. gosh. <laughs> no, I got it. All the way to almost needing to rebuild an entire house. The kids that come with the groups, they really enjoy getting involved with the families and, oh, yeah. and seeing things that they do really make a difference in someone, yeah. someone's life. These kids came from across the country to put a roof on a house in Sparks. The teens from three different churches in Minnesota, Illinois, and South Dakota. Someone to just call their parents and say, I'm not coming home. I'm going to stay an extra week. Others say, I'm definitely coming back next year to do it again. I love the work you guys do. The program is through Lutheran Social Services and is part of the El Paso Long-Term Recovery Program. It's designed to help families whose homes were damaged during the 2006 floods. But this home belonging to Perla Rodriguez was added to the list this week. The owner suffered damage from recent flooding. Se metía toda el agua. The water was running down the walls from the roof and we couldn't sleep in the bedroom anymore because the damage was so bad. Perla happens to be friends with someone who's having their home repaired. She met the team, talked about her problem, and help was soon on its way. Now she has a brand new roof, something she can hardly find the words for. It is very emotional. It is wonderful that we are not going to have to scramble to get water out of our house when it rains. And the team, which is made up entirely of volunteers from across the country, have repaired some six homes in the Sparks area so far this summer. There are four more homes on their current list. It was exactly two years ago today that a flood of historic proportions pounded the borderland. For most of us, memories of the 2006 flooding are in the past, but some flood victims are still living with the results two years later. KVOX News and 9's Monica Baldarama is live from our exclusive Eastside Bureau to explain. Three church groups came together to repair and remodel people's homes in the community known as Sparks. This home in particular was one of the greatest in need because some of the damage caused in, the 2000, in 2006 was never repaired. It's been two years since the 2006 floods and just today this home is receiving some badly needed repairs. Today we're actually starting to put on a new roof. The resident of this home, Marilu Avalo, says her brother tried to make some of the repairs, but the rain was too much. It started leaking. The more it rained, the more it leaked. 35 volunteers from three churches from out of state received a grant through the Lutheran Church Missouri Synod and the World Relief and Human Care. Out of 70 applications from Sparks, they chose 10 with the greatest need. Today, with the, being the remembrance of the, the flood, uh, they decided to de dedicate their day to day working on three separate projects over here in Sparks. The damage inside Marilu's home was extensive. Today, volunteers worked on replacing the paneling in the hallway and fixed tile in the bathroom. All the repairs were left over from the original flooding. 11 and a half in. Marilu says the hard-working hands she sees in her home are the same hands that reached out to dozens of people who fell victim to the 2006 floods. She says the help is what she needed and she's grateful. The Long-Term Recovery Committee of El Paso also donated $1,000 worth of material for this home in particular. Now for a look back at the KFOX coverage of the 2006 floods, all you have to do is log on to our website kfoxtv.com and click on this story. Reporting live from our exclusive Eastside Bureau, Monica Valderrama, KFOX News at 9. At 10, two years after the floods of 2006, and there are still dozens of homes in Sparks in need of repair. But this week, 10 residents got some hope. Young volunteers from across the country coming to town to lend a helping hand. KDBC 4 News reporter Robert Boyd is live in the Sparks area with the story. Robert. Well, Christina, the floods of 2006 may seem like a long time ago, but for the people living here in Sparks, they're still reliving it every day. Now, take a look behind me. Some of these homes still have leaky roofs. Some need their entire bedrooms replaced. So today we watched as volunteers tried to restore this community. Lots of nailing and sawing in Sparks this afternoon. 31 volunteers from Illinois, Minnesota, and South Dakota are in town this week. 
helping to rebuild 10 homes that were destroyed during the 2006 floods. I feel that it's really rewarding for me, and it's also important because it's rewarding for the people that we're helping. The volunteers were organized by the El Paso Long-Term Recovery Committee and the Isleta Lutheran Mission. The materials are being funded from a $60,000 grant made possible by the Lutheran Church's World Relief and Human Care Fund. This is a 6 out of 10. Um, we've actually kind of been working on different projects here and, here and there simultaneously. Some have, have been fully completed, others we're still working on, as well as if, if we're able to get another grant, we would like to do another 10 homes in the area as well. Most of the volunteers are college students, some of them spending their final week of summer vacation to help those in need. It's something different than your everyday life. I mean, there's so many people that go on trips and they tell you about it, but it's not the same experiencing it yourself. Coming from South Dakota, Volunteer Marla Dahl didn't expect the damage to be so bad two years after the floods. However, she says it only makes her want to help that much more. If I had a chance to go again, I would definitely do it. Now this is a good start for the sparse community, but a lot of work still needs to be done. A total of 73 homeowners still on applications to get the repairs, so the volunteers are hoping that more funding becomes available so they can finish the job. Robert Boyd, KWC 4 News. An uplifting story. Thank you very much, Robert. Two years ago, the skies ripped open over the city of El Paso, unleashing Storm 2006. Do you remember where you were? Well, many were watching their homes fall apart. And tonight, the repairs still continue. ABC 7's Daniel Marin has more for us live. Daniel. Yes, Ella, when a lot of us remember Storm 2006, and we think about the damage that we saw all around the city. Now, it's easy to forget that the county also saw just as much, if not even more damage, including in Sparks, where tonight, they're still repairing homes. Just gotta help them as much as we can. Two years after Storm 2006, the sun is out in Sparks, and it's definitely hot. Just ask those tan teenagers you see running around with building materials. They're with church groups from the Midwest. I like working outside. Here in the borderland to help rebuild homes. New roofs, uh, new drywall, new paneling, carpeting. And rebuild lives. Lives that were put on pause after the floods of 2006. I've volunteered for other things, but never anything this intense. This young man named David isn't just talking about the labor, but the intense emotion of helping strangers dealt a crushing blow by Mother Nature. Many of them, they don't have insurance, and they don't have a, a great income. Three and a half and I'll probably be in. The blue home you see belongs to Maria Avalos. She lives there with her little girl. Storm 2006 left her and her daughter without a floor and without a roof. And now, two years later, she's getting a little help from new friends from hundreds of miles away. The thought leaves her with few words. And the youth groups came together with the help of the Isleta Lutheran Mission right here in El Paso. And in case you're wondering where all the materials came from, the church actually got a grant, and they say that they plan on fixing up a total of 10 homes in the area. Estella. That's some great news. El Pasoans always come together. They sure do. Daniel, thanks.